Hello and welcome to this very interesting conversation we have with us, Zarina Skrubala, co-founder of Swades Foundation. The foundation has been doing some credible work for over 25 years. Zarina, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Ambika. It's my pleasure, really, on behalf of all of us at, at, at Swades. Uh, uh, Zarina, you all have been working, uh, you know, on ground when I talk about Maharashtra, Raigar. Simple question, Swades Foundation, how has it really impacted the life of women? Because this whole conversation is about breaking the gender bias. We are going to be talking about how water accessibility affects women, how wash affects them. But tell us about your work and how has it impacted the life of women uh, across? So I think, Ambika, what I can touch on here, because we're going to be talking a lot about water and yes. toilets, which really do definitively mm -hmm impact women, in fact, a little bit more than men, though mm. it impacts everyone. But one of the things I'm very proud of is our overall at Swades, you know, we believe in Swa Se Bane Des. Mm. And over there, what we've done is our village development committees is a creation that I'm very proud of mm. because the village themselves takes charge. And within this Ambika, we've ensured women leadership. 50% of all the village development committees are run by women. 50% women run the, the village development committee. Mm. Let me say this accurately. And there are some places mm. where they're almost 80% run by women. So 80% of the committee is women. Yeah, so honestly, the vibrancy of those villages and the mm. work that they do is outstanding. And this is not in any way to compromise the men. Yeah. But because I think the learning has been that the women really carry the burden of poverty. Mm. You know, they are the ones that go to fetch water. They are the ones who go to fetch, uh, who, who suffer when there's no toilet. Yeah. They are the ones who cannot earn a livelihood because they're spending four hours a day fetching water. water. They're not going to the toilet because mm. they wait till dark, Ambika. They wait yeah. till dark to go. So in, the poverty is suffered immeasurably more mm. by women. Right. and the elder daughters. So they are your best agents of change because their need is so powerful. And since you all have involved them in the community, they are there, whether it's decision-making, whether it's understanding the problem, so the solution lies with it. They understand the problem and they are impacted by the problem yeah. and therefore they come up with wonderful solutions themselves. Mm -hmm. And their, their joy, the joy that they experience with their newfound leadership yeah. Because they are now running their village, they are taking their mm. decision makers, perhaps, perhaps for the very first time, yeah. you know. And also, we are kind of you're empowering them, you know. And uh, if I, if I can ask you, when we're talking about, of course, you've told us that how women are impacted more by, than men. Why does gender inequality exist, whether when it comes to access to water, sanitation, and hygiene? And how can we really change this? I, I think it's a really good question. There's something we don't often think about, Ambika. Mm. So there are two aspects to this problem of gender inequality. It's, it's gender bias. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing gender bias, which we yeah. know about. Yes. But it's coupled with a very interesting factor, Ambika, which is a woman's mm -hmm. natural and very beautiful need to nurture their families. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's this bit of the gender bias coupled with this, which is definitely negative. Yeah. And then there's this positive force of a woman's nurturing abilities. Okay, yeah. so this... Keep this in mind when I go to the next point. Yeah. In water, there are two aspects. One is getting the water and the other is the use of water. Yeah. The two factors are against the women, making it a double whammy for them. Yes. They are the ones who walk miles to fetch water. Mm -hmm. In the hot summer months, sometimes four hours a day, multiple times a day sometimes to fetch mm -hmm. water. This impacts the energy level. Yeah. Their ability to earn because they have no energy left. Yeah. It impacts their back and many other things sometimes. Physically, uh, yeah. Physically, the drain is draining, yeah. And impacts their physical health, okay? Mm -hmm. And their ability to earn. Look how it's all linked. Connected, yeah. Their girls, the eldest daughter also walks with them, mm -hmm. okay? Because mm -hmm. one pot of water on the head is simply not enough. Not or enough for the family. Food, they often do. Yeah. So the young girl comes. If she doesn't go to school, see, sometimes mm. this is school. This is not something that they choose to do. It's forced on them. This is really poverty, Ambika, when you are not allowing. And, and you know, we, we, we should not think that they don't want their daughters to go to school. Mm. They really want their daughters to go to school, but they can't help it. They don't have a choice because, because they don't have and a water is a basic necessity to survive. I think it's for life, you can't manage, right? So this yeah. is one aspect, the fetching of water. Yeah. Second is the usage of water. Mm. 
a man has the natural first right to water in the villages. We have noticed this time and again. Mm. So it's again a double whammy. Now you come to toilets. Okay, another very important factor. The decision mm. to build a toilet in the village is made by the men because they hold the purse strings. Yeah. But the need is felt by the women. So <laughs> when women in the village are empowered, this factor sort of evens out, okay? Yeah, yeah. It evens out. And really, uh, Ambika, what we have learned when it comes to the need for an individual household toilet. Mm -hmm. When Swadesh Foundation first started, everyone was building community toilets in rural India. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, you know, and in my mind, it is if my mother or my grandmother was living in the village, mm -hmm. what would I want for her? Yeah. I would want an individual household toilet. I would want a tap in her home, bringing clean drinking water to her home, like yeah. all of us do. Yes. And really, this toilet story, you know, I, you know, it really, really used to make me cry because mm. the women get up at four in the morning. They go in small groups to defecate yes. outside the village. It's, it's, it's undignified. It is an onslaught on their health. And also they get harassed. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, get harassed. they get harassed. They get snake bites and other, other kind of harassment as well. So it has a massive, massive positive impact. Mm -hmm. I remember that when we first did water and sanitation and the next time I went to the village, the women came, they came out to me in a sort of very purposeful yeah. house, like, oh, oh, what have we done wrong? You must be so happy. I mean, that's... You first, know that first I was a little nervous because they're just coming very forcefully, walking up to me, very determined. Mm -hmm. I was wondering and they said, you know, now we want to ask you something. We have so much time on our hands, so much energy. Wow. What can we do? And we started forming the SAGs, the self-help groups. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's so, why I, before we actually talk about the problem, I wanted to see, you know, because the kind of work you'll have done, of course, you know, we've been working with you all for so long. But I mean, and also the whole thing that what you're realizing that more than education, I think the basics is what is important. Yes. I mean, whether it's toilets, whether it's water. You know, it, if, you, if you look at it as a pyramid, at mm -hmm. the base comes water. First yeah. is water. Then yeah. I would say toilets. Yeah. Then health, health and education and livelihood is the is the crowning glory, if you like. But and like you said, water, I mean, you can only earn possible. if you have the basics, right? I mean, you only have time to earn. Yeah. You can't have a livelihood without water. You can't farm without water. You yeah. have kind of dairy or poultry. These are the traditional methods of livelihood awesome. in a village. Without in fact, you put it so well. I think it's easy to it's also easy to understand. We really can't have a healthy India if you don't have a clean India. And that was the link when we were talking about and women, of course. Uh, Zarina, on our campaign, the Banega Swast India, you know, we, we are talking about breaking the gender bias. I mean, why again women bear the brunt? And even talking about, uh, you know, this whole climate uh, change, uh, the crisis. What impact do we see or do you think we are seeing on women on ground since you're working there? And is there also a gender divide when it comes to the impact of environmental crisis on women? Yes, unfortunately, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And the simple answer is women are responsible for gathering the food, cooking yeah. the food, therefore firewood. Mm -hmm. gathering firewood and for the water right mm -hmm. so when climate change happens all these factors become more difficult to access for the woman yeah. so the everyday life is heavily impacted by climate change mm -hmm. and you know what you won't believe it you go to a remote farm and the, the farmer will tell you madam climate change yeah. they will use those words they're aware of it you know yeah. and i think as i said before because mm -hmm. women bear the brunt they also come up with really innovative solutions. For example, when we did the tap in the home, the women decided to use in this village called Angrevad, Angrevad, Angrekon, Angrekon. Angre. They, uh, they decided to use their wastewater and they grew kitchen gardens. And wow. the kitchen gardens were so successful, not only did they feed their children, hmm. but they also sold the vegetables. So it's a double win. It, I mean, they come up with these things. I, actually, we hadn't even thought of using the waste. Hmm. You know, it's just that they, once they're empowered, once they, you build that can-do attitude, they come up with beautiful ways of solving their own problems. I remember, you know, Ambika, when I had, uh, when we first started Swades, yeah, and uh, there was Ronnie and me, two media people, what did we know about poverty, right? So we went on a one-year journey across wow. India, all right? We met communities and we met uh, government people and we met donors and we met multiple people. And we ended our journey in, um, 
in Dhaka, uh, in Bangladesh. And I met Sir Faisal of BRAC. Wow. And he said something to me. And you know, I tell you, Ambika, he's a thorough, I mean, he recently passed away. Yeah. But he, I, ha, I mean, I was starstruck. I was starstruck by the work he did. Yeah, the work he, he told did. me, he told me, if women can manage poverty, they can manage wealth. Hmm. You know, True. because, and it, you know, it really, it stuck with me. So everything we do, you empower the community equally with men and women, yeah. not to leave the men out, not at all, not under yeah. anything. I mean, it's about bridging the gap. At the end it's of about the bridging the gap. Yeah. It's about bringing them together. It's about making them see each other's perspectives. Mm -hmm. I have to say that in Maharashtra, this gender bias is much less than in other parts of the country. No, we I think, yes, I think you're right on that. Because again, you also need to educate the men. The men need to come forward and realize not just whether it's wash or water, but for everything. I think that... They're that equal to partners, right? Yeah. And we have different roles. I mean, women perhaps have a more nurturing role. Yeah. Temperaments are different. Fine. But yeah. they have an equal role. Yeah. I mean, we see that change happening. We've seen women even today, uh, Zarina, in male-dominated professions doing really, really well. But a lot more needs to happen. If I can, you know, a simple thing. What do you think about women when it comes to access to wash facilities? And do you think that can really empower you know, women and also help break the gender bias and how can it also benefit the families? Because it's not just washes, not only for women, but it's also helping the families. We believe in a holistic model of development. Yeah. We say there's no silver bullet to poverty mm -hmm. alleviation. Mm -hmm. But Ambika, if I had to pick one or two things, I would pick water and toilets. You yes. know, I would certainly pick water. I would certainly pick water. Without water, there's nothing. There's mass migration, mm -hmm. okay, without water. Once you put water in, and yeah. because we do it in a particular manner where the community is empowered along the way, mm -hmm. and the women are empowered along the way, yes. the whole the, the uh, community is able to come together and start solving their own problems. Yeah. Mindsets start changing. So it's not just the infrastructure, Ambika. Yeah, it's about it very important holistic. how you do it. How you, you teach them to work with problems, mm -hmm. how you teach them a community just to understand mm -hmm. water, this wash, which mm -hmm. I really ardently believe is mm -hmm. so critical because it has impact on dignity of women, mm -hmm. safety yeah. of girls. It has health issues, huge health issues. Yes. What is the point of doing nutrition without clean drinking water? In fact, I was coming to that, like what, because when you're talking about water, what are your thoughts? How can access to water actually improve the health and nutrition parameters for women and help in achieving when we're really talking about a healthy India? Absolutely. There's no question. I mean, look yeah. at your own home. Imagine if you opened your tap and dirty water came okay, up yeah. and you had to drink it because you had no choice. What is the point of nutrition? Because your children would have... Diarrhea. Yeah, diarrhea. Or stomach worms. We, oh, diarrhea, diarrhea kills children every day. No? Yeah. Yes. So without, see, it's all linked. That's why, so these believe in a holistic model, okay? Mm -hmm. It's all linked. You cannot have. And one more thing, the best way to ensure clean drinking water, we use chlorination in certain cases when it's needed. Course, yes. It's a community-run chlorination mechanism. Mm -hmm. And as I said, 50% of those community leaders oh, are, have to be women. And in many cases, it's much, much more than 50%. Yeah. So I so think it's a model fact, which... Yeah, it yeah, impacts I mean, everything. It, it's got a 360 degree impact. Yeah, yeah. And that's how it'll impact, mm -hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, it's, it's good if they make their decisions. Uh, Zarina, you all have been working this for this foundation. Of course, you've shared so many instances and it's so good to hear that, you know, what is really happening on ground. I mean, of course, we know it, it's credible and the kind of work you're doing, your passion for the cause. Uh, what are your experience and observations of the status of women's access to WASH and uh, tell us in brief, how has the Swadesh Foundation impacted the lives of girls and women? Well, we've really impacted the whole household. But as I said before, the impact is felt more. It's the mm -hmm. felt need amongst women and especially elder girls and the elderly also okay. is much, much more. You know? uh, but in terms of just scale, we work in a one million geography where we have managed so far to uh, give uh, 
about, about 26,000 toilets, a lot with the help of Rekit Ben, ben Kaiser, actually. And yeah. that impacts about 1 lakh plus people and 40,000 households with clean drinking water, which is about mm -hmm. 2 lakhs of people. And also 200 plus schools have got uh, that. But you know, that's the infrastructure part. But for me, it, it is important. I, I will not say it's not important. But the first thing that should come is the mindset change, the yeah. can-do attitude, the water committees, the village committees, the women coming together yeah. the 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 making sure that everything is in order making sure the maintenance is in order you know not only that we've trained we have um thousand plus what we call swades mitras who are mainly women who are primary health care giver they are volunteers in the village and we have yeah. trained them on wash and we have trained thousand plus schools on wash with record guys actually and i think it's made a huge difference and just telling them that if, especially during covid ambika you know we did massive groundwork yeah. changing the mindsets educating them mm -hmm. and really and truly they absorb they absorb so beautifully and they use that learning yeah. you know because unlike urban the mm -hmm. amount of training or activation that happens in rural communities is much less. It's so there, but they're imbibing it. So happy. They absorb yeah. it and yeah. they use it, you know? So I think the whole power is about, actually, I think they're also appreciating it a lot more. You know, they're imbibing it, putting it in their daily lives. Uh, Zarina, if I can also ask you, uh, what, are, what is the government really doing to address uh, the water crisis and how, again, are women being targeted under those schemes and programs? Because you're, again, working so closely. Yes, we, we, I really, we really, I think all of us at Swadesh really believe in two programs. Many programs of the government are very good, mm -hmm. very important, but two are outstanding. Okay, mm -hmm. One is the Swachh Bharat. Yes. yes. And uh, you, we were really happy when that comes because it was sort of like a, a validation of our efforts. Because yes. as I said, a lot of people were telling us to not waste money and do community toilets. Mm -hmm. And really, I refused. I refused. And everybody kept feeling that maybe we're wasting money, you know. Yeah. And then the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan came, which is an individual, individual house to yes. eat home. And, uh, you know, so that is one which we're very, very fond of because it, it's mm -hmm. a validation of the work we've been doing since many, yeah. many years. I think 2000 five we started our individual household toilet work and uh, Swachh Bharat came in 2009 and the other one is the Jal Jeevan mission again mm -hmm. tap in home so we were like again we had this huge debate yeah. with Swadesh and also you won't believe uh, even the community resisted a tap in home initially oh. and uh, yes and we actually didn't increase we have a, a method where the community also pays a small amount yeah. to ensure their ownership and upkeep you know and their, their ownership of the project and we told them you don't have to pay any more, but we must put a tap in the home. Mm -hmm. These are our two really high impact oh. programs. But you know, uh, Amika, once it's over, mm -hmm. once hypothetically this wonderful dream is mm -hmm. achieved, it doesn't. The work doesn't end. Yes, of course. You know, the main, the main thing, as I said, what we love about their programs is the bottom up approach that they have, the mm -hmm. community empowerment approaches, mm -hmm. and the women led committees that they have also in their idea, in the idea that they've created. So I think, yeah, I think these are the two really powerful and excellent programs, and at the core is community ownership. Yeah. So and, and these two programs affect women in every way. In yeah. every way, in every including way. In, in being empowered. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, and Zarina, like you did tell us, you know, how you all have impacted so many people in these uh, years, which you all have been doing some wonderful work. If I can ask you, because you're working on ground again, you know the problems, you're talking to women. How do you think uh, when we talk about availability or even access to water, how can that be improved further across India, in fact? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point. Hmm. So you've got a few aspects here, okay? Yeah. One is you need quality of water. Yeah. You really need to check your water source quality and maintain it mm -hmm. and sustainability of the water. Yeah. See, once you have access, you can, you can, you have access. See, there is enough water, mm -hmm. just not nurtured properly. We have rivers that are silted and are filthy. We don't treasure our water resources the way we should, right? Mm -hmm. But once we have it, once we have it, we start treasuring it, we have it. Then we need to ensure that the quality is maintained. It's not degraded. We put, we, we, we do, you know, ma many, there are many, many things that we teach our community to do to sustain their water source and to ensure the quality of the water source. Yeah. Uh, you know, it can be watershed. It's small local projects like buns mm -hmm. and 
also cropping patterns, so important, drip irrigation, golden, golden child, you know, that really it's so amazing and it really needs to be done. And we do all of this, all of this work, mm -hmm. um, rationing in the hot months, mm -hmm. careful usage, never to waste, kitchen gardens grown from waste. Yeah multiple multiple things that we do okay that's one aspect the quality and sustainability the other one is community ownership which i've spoken about a lot mm -hmm. this is critical okay and you know what we have found that the communities once we've educated them they start doing things on their own they build contour trenching they do bonds they do they do things on their own you know mm -hmm. for, it's for them but it's very empowering yeah. and the last point is Ambika, it takes a community, it takes the village, it takes the world to change this. Mm -hmm. So we need to all collaborate. Absolutely. You know, communicators like yourself, mm -hmm. NGOs like um, not for profits like myself, mm -hmm. people like donors, generous donors, yeah. and the government, and above all, with the community in the center. The community yes. must be in the center, and all of us working together, Ambika, can and will make a difference. Definitely, as you know, actually, you know, you know, listening to you, speaking with you, I think, you know, the, I mean, the really, I mean, the kind of work which you guys are doing, and again, like you rightly said, it's about bringing everybody together, holistic approach, we definitely can do this together. It's been a pleasure having you with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ambika. Thank you.